Hi, this is Cedric. In the last episode, we discussed about the color management, and especially in the green node. Uh, this time, we go a little further in there. So, um, again, we start with the gradient. You know, I like gradients. And uh, something we actually didn't talk about last time was the viewer setting, because to make this um, um, gradient look good, in here, I have, so it's an sRGB uh, gradient that is that has been linearized to work in linear inside Nuke. But then there is also a gamma that is applied on my display to make it look all right on my display. In here, if I set it to known, um, I have, uh, as you can see, change on, on, my, on my waveform. And I have something that is actually not working uh, uh, anymore. So... Uh, this can be set either to Rec 79 or to sRGB, depending on uh, the type of display uh, that I'm working on. It's not the type of output, but the type of display. And uh, it's uh, something that actually adapts and tone map my linear um, uh, processing to my, uh, my display. Um, if I read some uh, new footage from, uh, from the Aria Alexa, for example, this... Uh, this shot. Now you can see that I have some extra parameters in here and especially now a new color space parameter uh, that has ACEs. So for those of you who are familiar with the ACEs, it's um, something that has been designed by the Academy of Motion Picture to actually help in the color management for the moving picture industry. And uh, as opposed to just the basic color management we, where we only manage the transfer function, you know, what you usually call a log or gamma. Um, in here, we actually also manage the primary colors of that. And uh, in here, I have, for example, I can translate uh, my original footage into the ACES color space, but I can also uh, translate it into a, a P3 color space, which is something for the, the, the digital cinemas. Um, so uh, now the thing is, I actually need to manage, since I'm capable of um, uh, inputting some footage with the management of the primaries, I need to have that as well into my display. Uh, and actually, that's the way I actually configure my working color space. So to do so, I will go into my uh, project settings. And in here, I have OCIO. OCIO stands for Open Color IO. Uh, it's actually a, a set of, of tools, open source tools, it's a project that has been started by Sony Picture Imageworks 40 years ago, and that gives you uh, ways to uh, actually uh, uh, work with a full color management inside Nuke. So by default, uh, you have Nuke um, uh, root lookup table, so you can have uh, the Nuke default actually emulate what you have, the sRGB and Rx9, but you can also have open color IO lookup tables, and in that case, in here, I have a different configs. So, uh, for example, in here, um, I have my output in sRGB. I can either use the RT. So that is the one that will work properly if uh, I set my color space in here um, to ACES. So that will do uh, the, the, the correct mapping of my original um, uh, RE log C footage translated into ACES and then back into ACES. Um, but I also have a new default that will emulate the, the basic, but with a different tone mapping. So it's a, uh, it, um, we have uh, also um, uh, Sony Picture Man works animation and visual effects. And you can also create uh, your own config file. With what is interesting with uh, uh, the, the Open Color IO is you can create an open um, a configuration file where you will actually define all the color space you want to be able to translate. So uh, there is also something uh, that we translate in here into, if you go to color, into the open color IO tool, if you use the color space conversion. Um, in here, the, the, the color space will have uh, linear, uh, an input and output color space. And depending on the type of config you've chosen in the, the project settings, uh, you will have different values in here. So by default, you get the basic, um, the one that comes 
uh, with um, uh, with nuke. Uh, but if you go ACES, for example, then you get uh, a much more advanced type of of, um, of menu with, uh, for example, translation from uh, ADX, which is uh, the um, color space used for thin scan in the ACES workflow, and for example, go from ADX 10 bit uh, to ACES. So uh, that is the implementation of Open Color IO inside um, inside Nuke. So this is the way you will be able to uh, implement the ACES workflow inside um, inside Nuke, but also create your own custom color space because as we will see in uh, later episodes um, uh, in fact uh, the ACES is, is a great color space to uh, transport data from one department or one facility to another but in some cases you might actually want to use uh, your own custom color space and um, uh, the open color IO uh, node color space conversion will uh, allow you to create your own um, custom color space so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ping me. And um, see you in another episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.